Every one of us in our lives, we will go through times when we hear that people have said bad things about us. We have to. We will hear that people have said things that are untrue about us, unfair about us. And this has to happen. Why does it happen? It happens because when Allah created us, He promised us that He's going to test us. And He sent to us a messenger. And that messenger taught us what to do, what not to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you were to follow the example of that messenger, you would not go wrong. So therefore, in the life of that messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely kept something amazing and unique. Subhanallah. What is it that is unique? He has been through times when people have said untrue things about him. Things that are unjustified. So he has been through that, subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen that if any one of us is to fulfill the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would need to go through many things that he went through. And Allah would be testing us. How's your reaction? That's it. So when someone says bad things about you, lies about you behind your back in front of you when someone falsely accuses you the first thing you need to do as a believer the one who has declared la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah the one who has declared there is none worthy of worship besides allah and muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger the first thing you need to do is to thank allah wow it might sound strange i'm telling you when someone says something bad about you in front of you or behind you Thank Allah. Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah has chosen you. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Allah has chosen you. To do what? Allah is just preparing you to give you that opportunity to go through a certain sunnah that it is impossible to go through until and unless someone accuses you or says hurtful, hateful things about you, lies about you, and so on. How am I going to fulfill a sunnah? of bearing patience upon what people have said when no one said anything bad about me. Subhanallah. Now do you see where the Alhamdulillah comes from? Allah says, فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Amazing verse. Be patient regarding what they are saying against you. How am I going to be patient when no one said anything against me? So for that, it's impossible for you and I to lead a reasonably long life without someone somewhere down the line doing really nasty things against you. It's more about your relationship with Allah. That's what it is. You believe in Allah? Yes, I do. He created you. Yes, He did. Indeed, I'm going to return to Him. Well, He is the master planner, giving you an opportunity to bear patience upon evil speech, hurtful, hateful, untruths. Accusations against you, bear patience. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ One of my favorite verses. I'm sure you've heard me say that many times if you have followed a few of my talks. Allah says, we know that what they are saying hurts you. We know it saddens you. Actually, the term used is huzn. It saddens you. Nabi Wasallam was saddened primarily because he knew those people are actually engaging in a disservice against themselves. I ask you a question. You're a good person, brother or sister. You are innocent. You are straight. You are upright. And subhanallah, here you have people saying bad things about you and you know they are telling a lie. You should say alhamdulillah and feel sorry for them. Feel sorry for them. The Prophet ﷺ was saddened because he was sorry about them and for them to say they don't know what they are doing. Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. What amazing statement. Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know what they are doing. Imagine, Allah chose you. You're a mu'min. In the case of the Prophet ﷺ, he, was a, he is the messenger of Allah, the most loved unto Allah. What was he saying? Did he curse them and swear them and fight back like what we would do? Subhanallah. Someone says, you are stupid. You say, you, your mother, your father, and your whole family are stupid. That's what we would say. I hope not anymore. I hope it's not true. I hope what I've just said is not true. But sometimes that's how we react. We think we're a big deal. Someone says something about you, you swear him and his whole community. Subhanallah. Don't do that. 
Do you know your worth? Do you doubt your worth? I don't doubt my worth. My brothers and sisters, their evil must not make us lose our good. You heard what I just said? You will be judged by Allah based on your qualities, your statements, not on someone else's statements. So when they said something bad that was between them and Allah, they will be judged by what they've said. But because of your slight involvement in the sense that you're the third party on the receiving end, now Allah is watching you to say, but what are you going to do? On his side, he failed. Or on her side, she failed because of what she said. You have an opportunity to pass or fail. Here it is. We're going to show you the sunnah and we've revealed a few verses to guide you. And you know what? Let's see whether you're going to take heed or not. Take it in your stride. Don't get angry. Anger is from shaitan. Don't get angry. So what? They showed their colors. Those colors are not mine. I will still smile all the way. Subhanallah. And I know you don't butter my bread, my beloved brother or sister. You want to speak bad about me? My bread and the butter comes from Allah. Subhanallah. Just make sure that butter is sana approved. <laughs> my beloved brothers and sisters, look at how we should be looking at negativity. Look at negativity with a positive eye. That's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I'm not saying don't do anything about it and sit back, relax, let them trample all over you. No, that's not true. But I'm saying don't lose your great character and conduct because someone else lost theirs. You are, a, you are your own man. People are watching you. And not only that, you are supposed to be a role model and an example for those younger than you. Be they your family members, children, whoever else, your community members. They're watching you, especially as you grow a little bit older. You automatically become a senior. They will love you and have tremendous respect for you when they can see that this person is very, very wise. They are mature. They are good Muslims. They don't bother with the detractors. Today we have a sickness and an illness. What is it? People talk bad about everybody else. That's from shaitan. Now I'm talking about the person engaging in the crime. When you want to talk bad about others, you must remember the loss is yours. It's never theirs. Never theirs. You want to accuse someone, hurt them, harm them, abuse them, utter vulgar language against them. Someone swears you. What should you do first? Do you know what we do? I don't even need to say it. Come on. You know what we do. Someone swears you. Subhanallah, I see people nodding their heads. I hope you guys don't have guns in your pockets. Because someone swears you, you know, people in this country, they would actually draw their weapons. May Allah protect us. That's wrong. Someone swears you, you smile and walk away, don't even turn towards them. Fasbir ala ma yaquluna wahjurhum hajran jameela. Look at how Allah speaks about it. Allah says, bear patience. And you know what? Ignore them in a good way. Leave them in a nice way. Stay away from them. Don't communicate with someone whose intention is to rile you up. Every day they come to you and tell you one bad thing. They're riling you up. The one who can rile you up is controlling you. The one who can anger you has control over you. They want you to be foolish. So what do they do? They know we need this guy to get angry. When he gets angry, he's going to hit someone. When he hits someone, we'll do him in for public violence and we'll get him to sign this uh, admission of guilt to pay the fine and possibly to be in jail. So they've planned it before you even understood what has happened. And when they come, they just watch. By remote control, what's happening to you? You're controlled. But you can break their entire plan. They swear you. You just smile back. How's it? Swear you again. You're right. Everything good. They call you F's and B's. Hey, Kai. Everything lacquer. Subhanallah. When that happens, they will get so frustrated, so irritated because their plan has failed. That's what the Quran is telling you. Don't let people's plans pass. You must understand. There are people out there who will be hating you, disliking you for something. When you see others succeed in anything, do you get jealous? Do you get envious? Would you like to see their downfall? If that's the case, you need help. You need to connect with Allah. You need to actually build your relationship with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who gave them. He will give you. Work hard. Pray for them. Thank Allah for them. Don't become jealous because you know what? That jealousy leads to enmity. Enmity leads to hatred. And hatred can lead to war. Subhanallah, you hate someone, what will happen? You begin to hurt them, harm them, fighting, then it becomes physical. And sometimes it goes beyond that. People literally go to war because that business is doing this business. Look at the wars that are happening outside. I'm no one to comment because I haven't studied it deeply. But every day we hear about taxi wars and this wars and that wars. What is it about? It's all about sustenance and money and nothing else. Your company is doing well. I don't want it. 
I want it for myself. So what do they do? They shoot each other. Astaghfirullah. Like I said, I'm not an expert in that field, but we read what's going on sometimes in the headlines. And we feel sorry for the people. Subhanallah. You know, I always speak about buttering bread. And I just said earlier, who owns the bread and the butter? Allah. You don't butter my bread. And you shouldn't be thinking that anyone else is going to butter your bread when they are oppressing you and harming you. I always tell those who have employed others, please respect the employees. Respect them. You know why? Because Allah has chosen for them to be there and he's just watching you. Don't think I got the money and I'm the one who's the boss here so I can say what I want to whoever works for me because tomorrow it can turn around or with your children it might turn around. Who knows? And I always tell people, do you know what? Allah Almighty is the giver. Allah is the one. I'd rather have less with dignity than have more with total disrespect and dishonor. You got a post of a big manager, but they swear you every day, every day. And you are belittled and you are put to shame. Every, I'd rather walk out and say, you know what? I have my honor, my dignity. I'll have less, but inshallah, I walk away. Remember, Allah will definitely record what's happening. When you treat someone badly, I said this a few weeks ago. I have to say it again. When you treat someone badly, it's a debt against your name. It's coming back for you. It will come for you. Subhanallah. When? Five years, 10 years, 20 years in you or someone around you, something special to you, it's coming. Allah will never let it go. But he gives you time to make peace. So before anything happens, go to those you've wronged and apologize. Say, look, I'm very sorry. You know, I spoke to you very rough. I'm a human. Sometimes I actually, you know, lose it a bit, but I don't, I mean well. And so make peace. Because what did you do? You erased that ball that was coming back to pot you straight on your head. You threw the ball. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Now let me take you through that sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We follow his sunnah. How can I pray for those who've wronged me when I feel no one has really wronged me? So Allah says, wait, we're going to create someone who's going to wrong you. Do something wrong. Then we're going to just watch. Do you react how the Prophet sallallahu reacted or do you do your own thing? If you decide I'm going to take a page from the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First thing you do, alhamdulillah. Then you pray for them. Oh Allah, guide these people. Oh Allah, soften their hearts. That's not easy. Imagine the Prophet sallallahu was praying for Abu Jahl. He was an enemy. And he was praying for Umar ibn al-Khattab. He says, oh Allah, soften the hearts of at least one of these two. And bring them to Islam. So that at least the strength that they have, they can use it towards the deen. How many of us would ever pray those type of prayers for our enemies? And then we claim to be solid followers, you know, subhanallah. I, who are you? Well, I'm on the sunnah. I'm on, wait, relax. The sunnah is so broad that only a prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa could actually fulfill all of it. We can only fulfill pockets of it as best as we can. As best as we can. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah grant us good guidance. These words that I've uttered today are simply a reminder for myself because I'm also human. It happens to me too. You have people saying really nasty things about you. You get used to it. Subhanallah. You have to pray for them. You have to thank Allah. Oh Allah, soften the hearts. And guess what? The hearts are softened by Allah. He softened the heart of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Anhu. He softened the hearts of thousands of those who had att- intended to harm the messenger. Wasallam. They became lovers of the messenger. Peace be upon him. That anyone dare take the name of the Prophet Wasallam in a negative way. And they are dealt with. Subhanallah. So much so. Umar ibn al-Khattab is recorded to have almost drawn his sword for someone who insulted the messenger. And he says, He says, Oh Allah, let me swipe at the neck of this guy with my sword. He's a hypocrite. And the Prophet ﷺ says, No, oh Umar, take it easy. We were not sent to kill these people around us. No ways. But he was angry, upset. My brothers and sisters, they were trained by the Prophet ﷺ to calm down. Calm down. Think about what's going on. And when someone does something against you and I, tell yourself, Wallahi, this is my chance. My chance to engage in an act of worship that I would never have been able to engage in had it not been for this issue and this problem. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. I want to end off by telling you one thing interesting. Many of us go through divorce. Divorce is not a bad thing if it is the last resort. It happens. People have been through it. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum have been through it. What is bad 
is what you're going to do after that if it is negative. So divorce, you've been through it. It's a test from Allah. Are you going to stoop so low that after that you're going to speak bad about your ex-spouse or you're going to let it go because that was the whole problem and you're going to proceed and progress. Today, people don't realize that we have made lives more difficult after divorce than it was when they were in the marriage that didn't work. Simply because we've got a problem. These kids are mine and not yours. My brother, my sister, they are ours. Not yours, not mine. They belong to Allah entrusted to the two of us. Allah chose we're going to have kids and it's no way what you say or I say it's what Allah says. If you're ready to do that, you're a true mu'min. If not, you failed your test. You're still going to go to the day of judgment. And when you go there, only Allah knows what's going to happen to you. Don't ever get into a habit of saying, I'm going to sort this out on the day of judgment. Because the wisest of people sorts it out here in this world before the hereafter. Because when you get on that day, you don't know. You might just be the one who was wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So divorce is something that happens in order to open doors of new ibadah that you would have never been able to fulfill had you not gone through that divorce. So Allah's just testing you. Okay, you went through this. What are you going to do? You either pass it or you fail it. Say good things about your ex-spouse. I want to tell you what to say. You can say, you know what? I believe I was a good person. I believe she was a good person or reasonable person. We didn't get along. We had our differences. We may have done a few things wrong to each other. May Allah forgive us. I'm not prepared to go beyond that. That's a wise man. You, pre- you saved your tongue for the day of judgment. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, say good words or remain silent because you know whatever you say is going to be held against you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and forgiveness. And may Allah make us such that we don't utter bad words about others. And we, we, when someone says something bad about us, we take it in our stride. We thank Allah and we bear sabr and we deal with it in a positive way so that we can prove them wrong. You know, when someone calls you a dog, if you get angry, subhanallah, you've lost. Because if you were a dog, they look exactly like you anyway. It would make them the same species. You know, the last time, and I, okay, let me end on this light note. I know I said I would end a little bit earlier, but mashallah, it's not every time that I come to Newlands. There was a guy on the street and I was driving and for some reason, they... When the traffic light turned red, there is a little solid line. You get two, three solid lines there. So my bumper must have crossed the first solid line. He looked at me and said, dog. I said, woof, woof. (laughs) Subhanallah. He was just laughing. He was gone. You know, subhanallah. Because he wanted to get me angry. And so the way I responded, I just said, woof, woof. And he was like, this man is crazy, you know. And he started laughing. (laughs) He said, you know, you're human. I could have gotten angry. He said, you're the dog. You're a cow. You're this. You're Relax. Take it easy. Why are you overreacting to something that's minor? If he called you a dog, guess what? He looks just like you. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness and a beautiful lesson.